I'm going to tell a story on Bruce. He was helping uh, the spade ranches breed a bunch of heifers one time. Uh, they were breeding, I think, 600 heifers, and they were all trading off on AI. And it was his turn to rest, so he was in the back pushing cattle uh, through a tub system into the snake leading up to the chute. And he was going to see if he could load them all without moving. And he had him a sorting stick. He said he was leaning on the sorting stick. And a heifer would get turned about right, and he'd just lean. And they were trying not to get off his sorting stick. And he would push their head around, send them up the chute. Well, the cowboys noticed he wasn't doing anything but weaving back there on this stick, and they started giving him fits. And, but he was keeping cattle at the chute. And uh, they were harassing him about being a government employee and being lazy back there. And John Welch, who was manager of the spades at the time, wrote up and said, boys never mistake motion for accomplishment. <laughs> That's one of the best lines I've ever heard anybody say when it comes to working cattle. So many people are so busy and they think they have to be doing something and by doing something, they're doing the wrong thing at the wrong time and influencing cattle. If you're working with a crew, everybody needs to work in concert. Whatever happens, everybody wants to pressure at one time. If there'd been four of us out here trying to put those heifers in that pen all at one time, we might have rearranged some stairs because they wouldn't know who to listen to. So sometimes it's easier to work with fewer people so the cattle know who to listen to. It's always been my case. <laughs> and we used to have cowboy crews of 17 come to Brandon. We're now down to six. And it goes faster, smoother, and don't have as much trouble with the cattle. So there's a... <coughs> You just don't have to go fast to work cattle. It seems like you're going slower when you slow down, but if you look at the end of the day, you've probably done just as much, a lot quieter, a lot calmer, and the next time you try to work them, it gets even better. Now, if you're processing cattle and you, want to, you know you're going to be running them through the chute several times, another, let's go back to your cow herd. How many of you just let your cows go through your system without doing anything to them? About four or five, just open the head gate on the chute oh, yeah. and just let them go. A lot of us never take the time, so every time we work the cattle, it's a pressure situation. So they get to where they don't really like it. But it's, is, it, is there anything we do at the chute that is so painful or so stressful to a cow that they don't want to go? Is a needle that stressful? Well, you stick his head in the head gate, he might. Except changing bulls and steers. Actually, the, the mental, mental stress of going through the crowding process, forcing into those lead-ups, has been shown to be more stressful than surgical procedures. It's the mental stress on a cow. Their pain is different. and I mean, it appears to be different. Somebody were to stand me up and shoot and cast free, I'd, I'd probably pass out. <laughs> You know, a cow doesn't seem to do that. Shots, we fr fuss about them. As long as we use sharp needles and don't job it at them, they don't seem to mind that so much. How many of you work in an office where you think you have more than one boss? What do we hear? Oh, God. There's nothing worse than not knowing who to listen to. Because whatever you do is going to be wrong, right? Same thing on cattle. If we've got everybody pressuring them, they don't know who to listen to, it just builds in stress. If it starts out in the pasture, goes through the sorting process, lead up to the chute, through the crowd tub, through the lead up to the chute, it just builds and builds. Because think about that. They're out in the environment, no stress. We bring them in the crowds, they start getting a little nervous. We get them into sorting pens, less flight zone release. We go to a crowding tub or a bud box or something like that. There's no outlet unless the gate's already open. And think about how we use crowding tubs. How many of you have a tub system? Okay. How many of you have a bud box? How many of you don't know what you have? <laughs> you have something. I don't know what you call it, but 
I don't think it's either one of those. <laughs> a lot of them have these old V setups, like either one-sided or two-sided Vs. The concept was if you force on them from behind hard enough, long enough, one of them's going to squirt out the other end. It wasn't too stressful up here, was it? I'm going to come by and see if I'd pin her again, I guess. But that, any of those systems, if you think about how we work them, except the bud box, they're all designed to push cattle in from the back side, and then everybody keeps pushing from that side. One trait in cattle, if you keep pushing them against something they'd perceive as to be no outlet, what is their response? They're going to turn around and try to come this way. So if you're going into a tub system where you want them to continue to flow through it, stop pushing on the back. Because if you keep pushing on the back, they're going to turn and start circling. And everybody in the cow-calf business I know that has a tub that doesn't like it fusses about the cattle get in there and spin. Well, yeah, you're asking them to and they're obliging. Think about that. If, you, if the cattle come in this way and you're pushing your tub gate around, what are you actually doing? They're not drawing on an eye. You watch those cattle will always turn if the setup is this way. When you start pushing that gate, they're going to start turning circles like this. So you're drawing an eye and it's a curved shoot. That's what they know to do. How do you get them to stop that? Somebody needs to go to the front. They're looking for somebody to give them guidance. Go to the outlet end of your tub, draw their attention, and walk down their side. That's what we've taught them to do out here all the time. Okay, so work them differently. Same thing on the V setups. You push cattle in there, quit pushing on them from behind, let somebody in the front pick them up, draw them through. The bud boxes are designed for cattle to go in. They're designed to push them against the back. So you just alleviate that problem by making it happen. When they turn around, they're going to circle you and come back out looking for an opening. They work really slick if you know how to work with it. Because it takes advantage of the natural tendencies of a calf. 